Greetings all. Welcome to another session here of Tuesday Talks. Today's talk is going to be a special uh, introduction to the various components that make up uh, tree diagramming. And so today we're going to look at the variety of components that are in tree diagramming. Now you should know that tree diagramming rules are not the same everywhere. There are different people that set up different types of rules and regulations. Part of it's based on preference, part of it's based on uh, philosophical differences. So I'm just letting you know I'm going to be using uh, my style of uh, tree diagramming and hopefully that'll help you understand more about the components of a sentence as well as how and where to diagram them together. Okay, well, let's jump out here. We're going to take a look again, as I said, to the various tree diagramming components. When you begin looking at a tree diagram, you'll always note that it begins with a, a sentence at the top, a marker for the essay here at the top, and it's broken down generally into a noun phrase and a verb phrase. And uh, now there are times where a verb phrase may also be occurring at the beginning of a sentence. So you may have another line out here that says verb phrase as well because you have a part of the verb phrase that's been fronted. Um, other uh, teachers, other researchers will do that later on in the process. I'll do that at the beginning just so that it's easier for you guys as you're developing a tree. So we generally have a noun phrase and a verb phrase. And here's an example of a noun phrase. A beautiful young lady sat down next to me on the train. Okay, so beautiful young lady is going to be your, your noun phrase. Okay, you can see how we've got uh, different things in here. We've got a couple adjectives and we have a, a lady, a noun. There's your noun. And then your verb phrase is sat down next to me on the train. You can do the same thing here with the next one. The girls, your noun phrase, went to the park yesterday. And this is your verb phrase. It's the verb and all the parts that go with it. Now, question here is, where do you divide sentences? So normally, even before I write any of this stuff down, I'm always looking to find out where is the main verb. If I know where the main verb is, I realize, okay, all of this is going to be going to the verb. And so I want to be able to set it up that way so that it'll be done. So I'm looking for the main verb or the verb phrase um, as I'm uh, trying to decide how I'm going to build the sentence. Your typical sentence begins with a sentence marker S, a noun phrase marker, and a verb phrase marker. That's the beginning of your tree. First thing that you want to try to do is, is uh, include those in. Now let's take a closer look at a noun phrase. A noun phrase can be broken down into a variety of uh, components. We're just going to look at some of the major ones here. Uh, a noun phrase can include a determiner, can include an adjective, can include a noun, and it could also include an adjective phrase. Here's an example uh, of a noun phrase. A beautiful lady, right? So be a is going to be uh, a determiner. Uh, beautiful is an adjective, and of course, lady is a noun. You see how that breaks down. Uh, but I could also have the young lady with the curly hair. Now, the young lady, again, I have a determiner, and I have an adjective, and I also have a noun, but then I have this preposition. Okay, and this preposition says to me, oh, I'm going to have an object of the preposition, which in this case is the curly hair, and all of this describes the lady. Which lady? Okay, since it's describing a noun, it's going to be an adjective phrase. Okay, so you have an adjective phrase, but it's also a preposition. So I describe both its form and function. And these are the typical things that you find in a noun phrase. You may also be able to find um, um, other types of clauses, but we're going to look at those uh, a little later. I just want to show you the basics uh, for today. That's a noun phrase. A verb phrase can also carry a whole bunch of different things. Uh, so, for example, you can have a noun phrase, you can have an adjective, you can have a, uh, an adjective phrase, an adverb, an adverb phrase, an adjective clause, and an adverb clause. And all of this is in addition to a verb. Here's some examples, okay, of things that you find in the verb phrase. I opened the door. You can see how the door is a noun phrase that's in the verb phrase section. And uh, the blue door, you got blue here sitting inside your noun phrase. That's an adjective. With blue flowers. Well, that's another adjective. It's describing the door, but it's an adjective phrase. I opened the door quietly. It's describing how I opened the door. Look, there's an adverb phrase. I quietly opened the door 
with the key. This is telling me how I open the door. This is an adverb, but it's an adverb phrase. You can see all the different things that are happening here as we, as we take a look at the components. Bear in mind, I still have a noun phrase on the other side, I. And to be honest, I have another thing in here called a verb phrase. I'm sorry, called a main verb phrase because this is going to describe my main verb. Okay? So a verb phrase is going to contain the verb and all the parts that go after it. Okay, a lot of different things that can go into a verb phrase. Uh, let's take a look a little bit closer at what a, a verb phrase is going to include. It's always going to include a main verb, and it may include an auxiliary, depending on whether the, those parts exist in the sentence. Okay, you may have a negative, you may have the be verb, the have, or a modal inside your main verb. Uh, I'm sorry, inside your auxiliary. You're always going to have a main verb, but you may also have the auxiliary. So it's important to know this is going to be in every sentence. So you want to make sure that you remember that you're going to have a main verb phrase and a main verb in all your sentences. Here's an example of just uh, sentences that only have a main verb. I opened the door. And so in the main verb here is going to be open, part of the main verb phrase, which is also part of the, uh, the verb phrase, right? The doctor gave me a shot. And that's the main verb. There are no other parts. So when you're building this off the tree, it's going to be sentence, right? And then main verb, I'm sorry, and then verb phrase, main verb phrase, main verb, gave. That's how that would look if you were going to set it up. Let's take a look at how we would use this if we had auxiliary elements as well. So, for example, we have the doctor will give me a shot. Well, will is a modal, okay? And that's going to be the main verb here, give. And so we have will give me a shot. Will is part of the auxiliary, right? I could also say the doctor is giving me a shot. And is is part of your be verb, your helping verb. And I'm going to have is plus the ing, um, B plus ING. Another option would be the doctor has given me a shot. And then again, has is part of your helping verb for have. Have plus ED or EN in this case, past participle. Okay? So this is often the types of things that will be included in, a, in an auxiliary. You may also have a negative inside your auxiliary. Uh, I don't want a shot, right? <laughs> um, don't there would be negative. Okay, so there are a variety of things that go into an auxiliary, but an auxiliary is not always required. All right, so so far we've looked at a noun phrase, which could have a determiner or an adjective, a noun, and an even an adjective phrase. You could also have just a straight adjective, right, the, uh, the yellow flower. Uh, you could have just a straight adverb, right, the, uh, the dog slowly walked, right? Slowly would be an adverb. And then, of course, we have your, your uh, verb phrase here, which includes, so far, your main verb phrase, main verb, always going to be part of a sentence, and your auxiliaries, which could be negative, or could be the be helping verb, or the have helping verb, or a modal, or a combination of any of these. Let's move on. Let's take a look at adjective phrases. An adjective phrase, as I said before, it describes a noun. Let's take a look at the example here. I like the young lady with the curly red hair. Okay, so we would have a sentence up here which would break off into a noun phrase. Okay, and the noun phrase, of course, is just this noun. But then you have like the young lady. And that's going to be part of your verb phrase, right? We're not going to break everything down here. But we do know that with the curly brown hair is going to go to an adjective phrase. Okay, with is a preposition. And when you're looking up sentences and you see a preposition like this, you should immediately think, hey, this is a preposition. It's got to have an object that it's describing. Okay, I'm sorry, that, it, that goes with it, right? In this case, it's hair. And you know that a preposition is part of a prepositional phrase. That's the form of the element you're looking at, okay? So you're automatically, you see a preposition, ah, I'm going to have a prepositional phrase. The real key, though, is what's the function of the prepositional phrase? Okay, it's going to have a form, but what's its function? In this case, with the curly red hair is doing what? Well, it's describing this noun, the young lady. Which young lady? The well, the young lady with the curly brown hair. Okay, since it's describing a noun, it's an adjective. So when you go to write in tree diagramming, for, when you see a preposition, you've got to ask yourself, what's it doing? Is it describing a noun? Well, then it's an adjective phrase. You can write down the function, 
Then make sure that you write down the form. These go hand in hand. And then you can break down the, the parts of the prepositional phrase. Okay? So, so far we've looked at the noun phrase and all of its parts. We looked at an adjective, an adverb. We've looked at the uh, adjective phrase. And we looked at the verb components in a verb phrase. Okay? Bear in mind that a, a noun phrase can also appear in a verb phrase. And so can an adjective phrase. Okay? Let's move on to the last one here, which is the adverb uh, clause. I take that back. The adverb phrase. And an adverb phrase, like the adjective phrase, is going to have a preposition. And the preposition, of course, is going to have an object of the preposition, which in this case is the bridge. The sentence we have here, we drove his new car over the bridge. Okay, so I see a preposition. Oh, okay, what is that? There's my preposition. Here's the noun phrase that goes with it. I've understood that it's an, a prepositional phrase. I get the form. What's its function? What's it trying to do in the sentence, okay? Over the bridge, is that describing the car? Well, it's not describing the car. New would be describing the car. A new car, a light car, a red car. Over the bridge is actually trying to describe where he drove or how he drove, okay? It's describing the verb. And since it's describing the verb, we would help call the function here an adverb phrase. Well, I have an adverb phrase, its form is a prepositional phrase, and I can break down the parts. We okay here? Those are all the major elements that we were looking at today. Noun phrases, adjective phrases, adverb phrases, adjective, uh, straight adjectives and straight verbs. And remember that adjectives and adjective phrases, adverbs and adverb phrases, can also appear inside the verb phrase. Okay? And uh, that's all that I wanted to cover for today. I do thank you for uh, stopping by. If you do have any questions, you can certainly uh, give me a shout down at an email below or a text below, and I'll try to answer your questions. You have a nice day now. Bye-bye.